You're looking at the Slaters as they're getting set to take on MSJ at the MSJ High School Gymnasium on Munger Vision. You can watch it on PegTV.com or the old fashioned way on your television at Channel 15. The Mounties, in case you haven't figured it out, they'll be in the white uniforms for Haven in their very familiar dark blue uniforms. Melendez will jump center, number 11 for MSJ, and they'll be opposed by Stanner. And I'll go through the lineups as the night progresses on. Bob Prenovos, the head coach at Fairhaven, Mark Benetanis, head coach at MSJ, and a near capacity crowd to watch this rivalry unfold. Joe McCurran, Joe Davin, Jimmy Shortle, the three officials for tonight's contest. And we are up and underway, and it's going to be Sanborn with the grab, and contact, no whistle, and the shot missed. It was Murray that took the shot, and the ball's going to go out of bounds. To MSJ, it'll be Murray taking the ball out of bounds. For Haven, obviously he's gotten zone on an inbounds play, and they'll get the ball off on this side to Cassell. Cassell, a very good three-point shooter, and they've got to be able to extend the defense on him on the perimeter. They have to pressure the ball. You know they're in that 2-3 zone. They want to extend pressure off the ball, and that's going to be taken from the outside. Murray, no good. And the rebound on the weak side will come down to be controlled by Fairhaven's number 12, Levi Ellis. Ellis will be working against freshman Patrick O'Rourke into the front court, and Kaludi on this side. Kaludi is going to be one of the keys tonight, along with Standard. And that's Standard with the basketball. They look for the cut, and it didn't happen, and Coach Prenovos, if you've watched his team's play over the many years, and he's been coaching a long time, you'll know that they're going to be a very patient, push patience, try to be as patient as they can, and execute that half-court offense. And the Standard pass too tall, tipped around. Standard gets it down low, up, and stripped away by Cassell. So with one minute being played already here in the first quarter, we have no score. And Melendez turns baseline and traveled. Yeah, they had trapped him along the baseline. And of course, with the baseline itself, it acts like a third defender out there. That's Breslin with Sanborn. Going to walk up the floor with him. Breslin with the crossover. And Breslin now will go between circles and direct some traffic as Murray, well, that's not Murray, that was Cassell that lost it. It down inside, Kaludi with the bucket. Fairhaven with a lot of fans here taking that 18 minute ride from Fairhaven into Rutland at the MSJ gym. Melendez up and got it as he's able to push his big strong body down inside. That's one of the matchups for Fairhaven is how will they control Melendez down inside. Kaludi with the grab and foul on the floor. Joe McCarron with the call. Murray will be called for the hold. Now, Kaludi I, I covered at the younger age groups and in the Bandits tournament one year. I think he had been a sixth grade, maybe seventh, think sixth. Has he grown up? Has he put on some height? Kaludi reverses and can't get it. I hope they let him play tonight. That's all I got to say. Now I've got some excellent officials there and the travel call on Melendez and the ball will go over now to Fairhaven. That's going to be Kaludi taking the ball out of bounds into Breslin. And again, Sanborn there, number 25. That, yeah, got reaching, and he was going to be called for the fall defensively. And Jonathan Mitchell into the ball game, and he'll replace Sanborn for MSA. Jimmy Shortle, right in front of the scorer's table, give the ball off to Clutie, and he'll just Give it off to Ellis as he'll pop free in the backcourt. Ellis smashed up against O'Rourke. Big difference in experience there. The freshman against the senior. Of course, O'Rourke, first year varsity ball. Two to two the score, 5.53 to go in the first quarter. You're watching Munger Vision from the MSJ Gymnasium. And this time there'll be no pressure in the backcourt, and it'll be Mitchell that will toss the ball into Cassell, and he'll make the touch up, and Mitchell now will run the point. He didn't start the ball game, but he's definitely gonna play a ton of minutes now, run that offense out there. They'll go inside to Melendez, and he turn, lost the handle, recovers the basketball, tosses all the way across, and this will go up by Mitchell. No, had a good look at that three ball, and O'Rourke will get the rebound and bring it back outside for MSJ as Cassell to Mitchell. MSJ coming off a very close ball game on the road at Otter Valley, a game that they won. And that's O'Rourke for a three-pointer from the outside, and that'll break the tie, and it'll be five to two. Damn it, Bruno didn't realize if he turned the other way, he was wide open. Standard brings the ball outside. Kaludi 
will retrieve it in the backcourt. That was touched defensively up top by Murray. That's why there was no backcourt call. Clutie behind the back. Now his standard up top. Oh, nice pass back outside to Breslin. Open and got it. Breslin with the bucket. Makes it a 5-4 MSJ lead. Mitchell, Cassell. MSJ as a team, very good from the perimeter. Likes to take the three ball, but with people like Melinda's down inside, I mean, you've got to really concentrate and try to push the ball inside. Speaking of that, was Melinda's for about a 12-footer. No good. Weak side rebound came down to Breslin, and he'll bring it to the front court. Matched up against MSJ's number 12 out there. That's Mitchell. And a five-second call as Mitchell defensively did the job, and the high fives passed out by Coach Benetanis for that great defensive effort. So Rourke right in front of the uh, MSJ bench, in front of former Rowland High School graduate and player Jeff White, one of the assistant coaches for MSJ. As Corlew into the ball game now for MSJ. That's O'Rourke feeling it, letting it fly. No, this time the defender right in his face, thinking it's clear a look. It was a long shot, and Breslin backing out the plays. He brings it down the court with 3.56 to go in the first quarter, 5-4. MSJ with a lead. Bruno matched up against Corlew, the standard. So they've got Melendez way up top, and that opened up the inside. Kaluti, though, pass was even too long for Kaluti, who's got long arms but couldn't make the grab. As Breslin going to sit down and coming in the ballgame will be Emery, Austin Emery for Fairhaven, making his first appearance of the ballgame. Again, the bleachers just about sold out here at the MSJ gym. Corlu. Right now, the game being played at the pace that Fairhaven would like the game played at is inside. Good help defense on Melendez, and ball still loose back. Rourke to the floor, can't get it. This is Ellis as Rourke hustling back into play defensively. That's going to bring Cassell off the MSJ bench, and he'll be checking in next opportunity for the Mounties. Standard. Again, they brought the defender up top. That's Melendez. But they've kept Mitchell back. Well, he was watching that baseline. Now he'll kind of fade forward and play into the three-point arc area. And Bruno, good defense by Corlew. Now he's really pressuring off the ball very well. The running one-hander won't drop, tipped around, and comes down to Murray. Up ahead to Mitchell, chasing down the pass. He'll get it on the baseline. Inside to Murray, foul. Count it. I'm sure that's going to count. That's the tempo MSJ would like to have the ball game played at. And the basket is good with 2.37 to go. Mr. Rourke coming out, and now Cassell able to go in on that substitution for the Mounties. Murray at the line trying to complete the three-point play for MSJ. They pushed the lead to three at seven to four. Again, a real contrast in styles here, as, as I'm sure, and I'm speculating, but I'm pretty sure that Coach Prentivos would like to have it more of a grinded out half-court offensive game. And, MSJ, of course, wants to get all their thoroughbreds out and push the tempo of the ball game up and down the floor, baseline to baseline. Sanborn at the scores table for MSJ, getting set to check in. And that's Emery, his pass intended for Posa, but goes out of bounds. The Mounties will have the possession here after that turnover by Fairhaven. It's Mitchell, no pressure. It's, again, that's that zone defense being played out there by Fairhaven. Eight to four, MSJ. Pass intended for Sanborn, defended from behind by Standard, able to reach around and slap the ball away. Kaluti turns and keeps control of the basketball, goes up with it off the glass. No good, Corlew. Ball tipped out of his hand. Standard, well, he could have gone right back up with it. Kicks it back out and they'll reset the offense. Now, two minutes even to go in the first quarter. From the MSJ, Jim Mungervision bringing this local varsity basketball game. Well, that's, that had disaster written all over it as Pose the butt. Almost got called for the five-second defensive play, but he threw the ball away instead. Fairhaven being limited right now to just four points offensively. Well, it would have to be offensively, wouldn't it? Cassell, Mitchell, and Fla Sanborn flashed across the free throw line. They no way he was open enough to get him the basketball down his side. Mitchell open, and no. 
Standard with the defensive boards. It's a one and out that time for MSJ. 129 to go, and he'll hand the ball off to Emery. Troy Haven, Emery in the front court. Gasol with the bump. Good defense again. MSJ extending the defense way up top, pressuring well off the ball tonight. Now we're going to have a Fairhaven timeout. So Fairhaven taking a timeout with 1.13 to go in the first quarter on Munger Vision, 8-4 from the MSJ gym. Yeah, Kaluti taking the ball out of bounds. We're going to set the box formation up. Fairhaven offensively out there. The dark blue uniform, just in case you haven't gotten that down yet. And that pass tipped, and it will get to Ellis as he's, again, having a lot of trouble just finding any room to breathe as MSJ had been extending the defense. And now, yeah, Cassell coming out to contest Ellis to Kaluti back to Ellis. They want to wheel it around, and there's the grab by Emery. And they'll work the perimeter clock down to 57 seconds. Kaluti, nowhere to go along the baseline, getting a lot of, yeah, you just can't throw over the top diagonally on that defense right there. Murray, front court, Murray all the way up. And get the finish, Murray. Thanks for the 10-4 MSJ lead. 30 seconds left in the first quarter. Kaluti hasn't had a lot of room to work with here in his first quarter. Nice job down inside to Emery, the pass from Standard. Well, a little high, high post there, and he became the uh, point post player with the pass and makes it a 10-6 ball game. Very low scoring first quarter. As O'Rourke off the MSJ bench at the scores table. I'm not sure he'll even get in this quarter before the end of it. The running one-hander by Mitchell will go. It's going to count if it goes. Nope. That's the quarter. 12-6 MSJ with the lead over Fairhaven in varsity basketball action on Munger Vision. Well, as soon as there's an opportunity for MSJ, they have Tyler Ackley at the scores table. He'll be coming in for the Mounties, a freshman. Played most his youth career for West Rutland, and last year played for Christ the King, and now he's at MSJ. Boy, standard in a bad spot, and he'll be able to use his height to throw the top pass, tip to take it away. It was tipped by Mitchell to Murray, and now Murray lost the dribble. He's going to throw back to Coralou. And Breslin almost, he did create the turn. Breslin is able to get in front of the ball, screen it, and it hit Mitchell's fingers of MSJ out of bounds. For Haven down by six, only scoring six points in that first quarter. See Breslin right there as they pressure in the back court, and it's been tough going for Fairhaven right to, to adapt to this type of pressure and speed by MSJ. Clouty up, and that was Ackley that made the defensive play to O'Rourke now. They were teammates last year at Christ the King and then CYO tournaments, and O'Rourke got it. Unofficially five points for O'Rourke now. In the first half, 14 to 6 MSJ. Just about a minute gone by here in the second quarter. Nice grab by Breslin. Kaluti with great hands down inside. I'm not sure what he was doing there. I think he was looking for Ellis, who never broke to the basket, but Kaluti might have been better off to actually just finish that shot off himself. Sanborn in the trap, stole the way from Sanborn as again for even able to sandwich him down there defensively. Melendez at the scores table for MSJ getting set to come in. Standard beyond the arc would act on him defensively. Bruno had the touch, got the ball back to Ellis. Standard passed up that. And good, good decision as he gave the pass off on the cut to Kaluti, who came in on the top. There wasn't even a screen set for him. Nobody rotated defensively and stayed with him. And he'll cut the lead on the main basket to 14 to eight. Mitchell or Rourke, and I'll go back up top to Mitchell now. Ackley, all oh, good hands by the young man. Puts it on the floor, goes up strong, and that was blocked by Standard. Up underneath by Ackley, no, Ackley again, no. Sanborn is MSA dominating the boards. There's the foul. Ackley and Sanborn, just like two sticks of dynamite out there for the Mounties. Hey, Tom, way to work. That should be Sanborn going to the line, and it is, so. Sanborn heading the line, and again last year as a freshman, what an impact he made on this MSJ basketball program. It's a left-handed shot. Trying to pump the lead back up. It's at six right now, and it'll stay at six on that missed free throw. Murray, 24 coming in for MSJ. He'll replace Corlew, and Melendez will take 
Sanborn spot after the shot if it's a made basket. So Sanborn up and can't can the second one either. Misses them both. Stanner with the rebound. The throw over the top to Kaludi. Matched up with Murray. Murray, very, very good defender out there for MSJ. 5.55 to go in the half. 14 to 8 in the crowd. Split pretty much 50-50, and it's a sellout now. I mean, there's not a seat left. There's people in the doorway as Kaludi fades, fires, no. Got a push call. I believe it'll be on Ellis. Let Jimmy make the call here. Yeah, Ellis with the call, with the foul. Jimmy Shortle with the call. And now Melendez back in the ball game. Jaskin Melendez for MSJ, number 11. That's Murray on the left side, O'Rourke on the right, and Mitchell was in the middle, and that's Murray now with the ball. Ackley and Melendez both up front. Gives him a big front court to contend with right now. Off the back of Mitchell, he's able to chase it down and reset the offense now. O'Rourke open on the wing, didn't take the shot. There's the catch and the penetration shot up and no good. Rebound, Kaludi had it and he went out of bounds. Yeah, his momentum carried him forward and he stepped out of bounds. The ball will go over to MSJ with 5.12 to go. Team foul wise, it's just three fouls on Fairhaven, two on MSJ. Nobody in any foul trouble for either side. Mitchell, this time it's going to be Ellis on this side defensively. Ackley had the ball slapped away into the hands of Stanner, and I believe it was Bruno that actually knocked the ball away, but it ends up in Kaludi's hands now. Breslin, three ball on it, short. Long rebound comes up to Murray, and he's off to the races. Murray will step inside, and offensive foul will be the call. Offensive foul. That's going to be his second personal. That becomes big now with two fouls. There's still 4.53 to go in the second quarter. And see if anybody comes off the bench to take his spot. Oh, I hit the ceiling. I can't remember last time in a varsity game I saw him hit the ceiling. And he'll come all the way back to this in line. That's where MSJ will take, the, take it over. Yeah, if they throw that on a normal football pass, you know, lower trajectory, they would have had a man open. Yeah, hit the ceiling and... That's what they're discussing. Two officials are saying, man, I can't believe that. They're probably trying to figure out the spot of the ball, where to put the ball out of bounds. After it. It's very rare, seriously, that they, the ceiling gets hit here in a varsity game. Usually, and what I mean by that is the uh, younger age groups below varsity usually aren't strong enough to hit the ceiling. They're not as controlled. They don't have the accuracy. Like varsity's pretty accurate, actually. That's tip. Just a slow pass, weak pass, he's knocked away for Haven with it down the front court. Trying to cut the lead from six down. Standard, got it. But I tell you, the defense didn't come out to challenge that 10 foot shot. And he can hit that very consistently and he'll make it a 14-10 MSJ lead. Sanborn quickly off the bench, gonna be coming back in for MSJ's Mitchell up and that was partially tipped. There's Ackley, got it. Ackley on the boards, nobody boxed him out and the big guy. With the easy putback, makes it 16-10, MSJ. Kaludi had the ball taken away by Cassell, and he keeps it inbounds. Cassell, front court, long pass, Melendez. No, he wanted to avoid the offensive foul. and did a nice job of doing that, but it also changed his shot on him, and the Mounties were fouled by Ellis, and that will send Mitchell to the line, so Jonathan Mitchell for MSJ with 4.06 to go in the second quarter going to the free throw line. <laughs> See Mitchell, this is his routine before each shot. Long pause, look, the one hand hanging down and he'll make the free throw there. Austin Emery, number 10, coming in for the Slaters as Melendez will sit down and that's who Sanborn will rotate with. So Sanborn, 25, back in there in white for MSJ at the MSJ gym on Munger Vision. And the long pause and the shot, good. Pushes it down to an eight point lead at 18 to 10. Breslin matched up against Mitchell. Breslin will cross over and bring it to this short elbow and there's Kaludi. 
to Stannard, and this time he passed up that shot. Got in the air, gave the pass back to Breslin. Baseline opened up, and boy, I tell you, he was anticipating a block or a whistle, and Melinda, or it's Mitchell up, and no. Hangs on the rim, and tell you what, Stannard mistimed his jump, but came down with the ball. Anyways, kind of an awkward shot by Mitchell. Fairhaven down by eight. Second quarter action. Yeah, Joe McKernan taking charge down along the baseline. We'll have an offensive foul called against Fairhaven. Yeah. It's been a very well officiated first half of basketball by David McKernan and Schwartel. And the Mounties looking for their first double digit lead this trip down the floor. Cassell holds the ball well outside the arc. He'll just bounce down to the top of the uh, three point arc just outside the free throw line. Mitchell with that quick acceleration. And who touched it last? Yeah, they're going to say MSJ last touched it. It'll be Slater's with the ball. And Melinda's back in the ball game for Ackley. Ackley, nice job off the bench for MSJ. And it's Kaludi. Into Emery, matched up with O'Rourke. O'Rourke, remember, started the offense off for MSJ tonight and getting more looks at the basket as the season goes along. Of course, Patrick, an excellent offensive player his whole career. That's going to be blocked down by Melendez and stays down this in with Fairhaven. Good job by Melendez that time, moving those feet defensively as Kaludi slides over toward the corner here at the MSJ gym. And they want Cassell, there's a warning. Right there, yeah, I broke the plane. And next time it's called, it will be a technical foul. Now they're trying to get Ellis open. They got the ball a little bit late. He'll penetrate, give it off on this side. And Bruno, no, off balance. Ball comes all the way, almost to the free throw line. Mitchell flying down the court, up and got it. Good push by Mitchell to the baseline. Then the finish by Mitchell. That's a 10-point lead now for MSA. The first 10-point lead for either side in the ball game as Kaluuya works the ball up against Cassell. And Stan, I'm not sure who the pass was intended for, but it ended up in Standard's hands. Again, when they bring Melendez up above the free throw line, they never really have taken advantage of that so far here. Talking about the Slaters, 2.20 to go in the second quarter. Oh, well, good luck. Nice ball fake. There's the foul. Stanner with a good up fake. Got Melendez in the air, and he'll pick up the foul. And I'm thinking that's his second foul, and I am wrong. That is his first personal foul. MSJ's fourth as a team. Fairhaven with five team fouls. Kaludi spot, nope, trying to find his rhythm. Good box out by Sanborn. See him keep his hands alive afterwards, keep his hands active so they couldn't reach it and tie him up. And Emery, yeah, almost had to steal. Lost his balance, and that forced him to fall forward out of bounds. As Mitchell going to the spot designated by Joe McCurran, the official. And O'Rourke just will take care of the ball in the backcourt. Now hands it off to Mitchell. Cassell, baseline, slides along and hit the bottom of the backward. Kept the shot alive. Melinda's up and will it count? Have to wait for Mr. Shortle. Basket is good and the big guy, Melinda's now heading to the line trying to complete that three-point play. Boy, when they let him roam loose down inside like that, he is going to be tough, tough, tough for Fraven to stop. 22-10, to 10, lead now at 12. Okay, Melinda's with a good, long, patient look. Coils, releases, and no. To Cassell, no. Melendez got, just got the second foul. Nudged him out with the lower part of his body, and that's the foul call. Ackley going to be coming in quickly here. Number 30 in white for MSJ, as Melendez will sit with the two personal fouls for the rest of this first half. 22-10, to 10. Slater's been in a scoring drought both quarters here need to finish strong or at least not give up a mini run to MSJ down by 12. Not the worst position to be in. I mean, they're, that's tipped and told the way as the trap worked. Here comes Cassell all the way. Yes, nice pass. Got it. 
Unofficially seven for O'Rourke. Great pass from Cassell, and that makes it a 14-point Fairhaven lead. And see if Fairhaven gets something going here before the half ends. They're down by 14. And they're very confused offensively against this defense, against the quickness of MSJ. Kaluti open, got it this time. Three ball for Kaluti. Oh, if he gets hot, he's a shooter. That was a good open look he had. 24-13 MSJ. Nice catch, nice pass. Blocked and volleys on the floor, Cassell. Not about going baseline, now he'll throw over the top. O'Rourke with the grab. The defender slipped down, O'Rourke stripped on the drive. Ball's free and last touch by Fairhaven. What a wild sequence that was. And that leaves 31 seconds on the clock in the second quarter. And don't get Fairhaven with six team fouls, so if they do commit a foul here, it will be at least the one-on-one -on -one for MSJ as they toss it all the way in the backcourt to Mitchell. He'll be greeted at midcourt by Bruno. The Sanborn, he'll step up. Yeah, they were looking for the cut, and it didn't happen from the wing end. Mitchell taking a bump. Bruno's going to be called this time. That's going to send Mitchell to the line. See, to me, that would just seem like such an unnecessary foul. That's six team fouls, and you foul them above the arc. And again, it's just a matter of moving your feet. He kind of got stationary and then leaned with the lower body, hedged out with it, and picked up the foul. His second personal, and Jonathan Mitchell at the line, and he'll hang his arm. There it is, yeah, on his hip, and he'll look at the basket, focus, and take the shot now. Got it. So he'll do the same routine here, and we'll get set to have a second shot with 16.7 seconds left to go in the second quarter. 25-13 MSA over Fairhaven. Got them both. And now they'll extend that defense in the back court, make them burn some time, bring the ball up the court. You know, trying to get the steal also, but at least make them work some of that clock down. Eight seconds, seven seconds. So again, they, they have a lot of time just getting the ball into the front court. Time running down to standard. He'll ball fake, shot up, it'll count if it goes. Nope. MSJ with a good second quarter, extends the lead to 13. 26 13 over Fairhaven on Munger Vision. Well, the first four minutes so critical, I think, for Fairhaven. They're down by 13, which isn't insurmountable, obviously, but a lot of times the tones are set for the second half in the first four minutes of the third quarter. Mounties push the ball inside to Sanborn. Great cut by Murray, reverses it, and got it. Murray with the pretty finish. And then the press applied by MSJ, and the steal by O'Rourke. As Standard hit him with the pass, and O'Rourke with the good hands, able to hold on to it. Cassell will hold the ball near midcourt. That's Bruno coming out to play him defensively. Like I said, MSJ coming off a tough road win against Honor Valley. A much different looking club tonight. Sanborn off the window and in. 30 to 13, the largest lead of the ball game right now for the Mounties. Kaluti works his way into the front court and gives the ball off to Ellis. That's O'Rourke there defensively. Breslin penetrates, throws up, blocked by Melendez. Push back out to Sanard. Again, a lot of quickness out there for MSJ. I will tell you though, and that doesn't mean it's gonna to happen tonight. When I did the tip-off tournament here this year, MSJ had very strong first halves, but then kind of stumbled in the second half of play each game. Now, I'm not saying that's gonna happen here, but. Mitchell again didn't get the start, but he's in the ball game now. He'll be pushed to the point. Sanborn will come out. That leaves Murray, Mitchell, Cassell, Melendez, and O'Rourke on the floor for MSJ. Breslin, Bruno, Kaluti, Standard, and Ellis out there for Fairhaven. Now, one thing Fairhaven's got to do better, first of all, is defend off the ball. But they've got to come out and pressure up top, just like this. Yeah, Mitchell. Being picked up by Bruno, and then they'll give the ball off to O'Rourke. He's hit a three ball tonight. This is Murray. He's had a big ball game for MSJ, and he's fouled on the drive. 
by Breslin. Jimmy Shortle with the call here in the third quarter. The first foul of the second half will be assessed to Fairhaven. Actually, the board gave it to Kaludi, so Kaludi will pick up his first personal foul of the ball game. Kaludi, for the most part, offensively, has been very limited on the touches and looks tonight. And Murray, like I said, Murray's been real solid tonight. Nothing but twine there on his first free throw. As Murray settles in now at the free throw line for the second shot. Up and got it. Gets them both, 32-13. So Fairhaven held scoreless here the first two minutes of the third quarter, and Cassell making Cody work hard to bring the ball up into the front court. Ellis will hold it and late standard step out. Kaludi, again, no space to get the shot off. Turns, goes left-handed, and gets his own rebound and had it knocked away from behind by Cassell. Ball on the floor, standard up, and no good. Standard again, got it. They're gonna call it. Basket's good. Okay, I had to wait and see who the foul was on. O'Rourke will be assessed the foul. The basket is good. Standard going to the line. O'Rourke's first personal team's first foul here in the second half. And Max Standard all set. Try and give the people from Fairhaven who made the ride up here, or over here, something to cheer about. He'll get the three-point play and cut the lead in half to 32-16. Mitchell, gonna be an offensive foul, good call. Got cleared out with the elbow. Very, very visible on the camera here. Shortle with the good call. Center of the arm, pushed off. Just like in lacrosse, that'd be a warding off penalty. Same deal here in basketball. That's gonna be Mitchell's first personal team second of the third quarter. Play of Breslin. Did get the ball in the front court. Handed it off to Kaludi. Now they I'm not sure what they talked about, but Kaludi looking for more offense here in this quarter. Mitchell didn't whip the pass inside to Murray. He'll come up top and be followed out there by Bruno. Bruno able to almost come up with the steal. And a timeout called before the turnover. And MSJ looking for a 30-second timeout. Up by 16, 32 to 16 over Fairhaven on Munger Vision. So the Mounties burn a timeout to keep possession here of this basketball before they would have Turn it over, Mitchell. Directing some traffic on his right side. Wants to Cassell to come out and see Cassell. Wants Melendez to set the screen. There's a switch, Melendez to the hole, no. Actually, that was pretty well defended. That was an awkward angle for Melendez to take the shot. Bruno gets inside, goes up, got the foul. Now that was just bad defense. And Mitchell will pick up his second personal foul. Exactly what Coach Benitas is telling him. He, he got on his side, and after he got on his side, there was nothing but an open path to the basket. So Breslin getting two shots now. Third team fall on MSJ here in the third quarter. <clears throat> Boy, and Breslin with the miss on the first shot. Again, you go to pegtv.com, click video on demand. <coughs> you can watch local sports anytime, anywhere, free of charge. And both shots missed that time. Boy, Fairhaven needing offense any way they can get it. Missed two free throws there, and O'Rourke puts the ball in the hands of Mitchell, and he waits for Cassell to come up top between circles. Everybody above the free throw line right now for MSA offensively. There's Melendez with the score. That time, the pass was at the feet of Melendez and taken away by Fairhaven. They tried to call a timeout and didn't get it, and it's probably a good thing as Stannard, no. Tip, no. Fairhaven with a couple of chances, and here comes a four on two the other way, and they can't get the finish, and Melendez won't get the finish. A couple of chances both ways, and we stay at 32-16. Murray and Breslin now dancing up the floor together. Now Murray, very intent, very intense defender out there. Oh man, 
You can see how much they're thinking about the shots as they didn't put it up, and that's no good from Cludy. And a push from behind will be on Mitchell, I believe. Yes, Mitchell Kyle. Three fouls on Mitchell all here in the third quarter, and that's a push from behind. Sanborn and Corlew coming in for MSJ. Melendez also going to sit down. He's got two fouls for the Mounties. Ackley coming in late, and yes, they will allow Ackley to come in. Tyler Ackley, number 30. Nope, nope, they're going to pull him back. He was at the scores table. They rang the buzzer, and then Coach Benetonis went and got him. Whoops, I was watching the wrong person. There we go. As Emery's also checked in for Fairhaven. Cootie will draw the foul. Cootie, just in the first four minutes of the third quarter, has done more and looked for more offensively than he did the entire first half, and they really need Cludy to become Cludy, you know. As that foul be on Corlew. 32-16, MSJ with the lead in Fairhaven. At the free throw line, first shot of two up and good by Cludy. And again, Jonathan Mitchell picking up three fouls, sitting on the bench for MSJ. including canning them both. Now Fairhaven going to bring the defense pressure up a few notches and boy O'Rourke with a quick push on front court, ball knocked away and Emery with the basketball. So that time to press work. Now don't forget Mitchell sitting on the bench. Most times he would be the point guard and Murray with the steal. Up oh, might carry the oh, blocking foul called on Fairhaven. Tell you, Murray did a great job on the initial steal. The ball came above his head and he nursed it down, not to get picked up the uh, violation offensively and then the blocking foul on Fairhaven. And that will be the second foul on Emery, second team foul also on Fairhaven. Murray, perfect from the line here tonight. Unofficially three for three from the line. Yeah, Fairhaven at the midway point of the third quarter with just 18 points. Murray up and good. On the made basket, Melendez able to come in for Corlew for MSJ. Yeah, I'm looking at yeah, one, a man up full court and Emery able to get the ball, but he's going to work it up against Murray. Murray, like I said, tough, tough defender. Nice job by Emery as he loses his balance, loses the ball, and picked up by Cassell. There's the finish. Nice job by MSJ as they get a two points defensively into the hands of Kaludi. He'll spin in the middle of the floor and be greeted by Cassell behind the back between the circles into the front court. And just well defended. Murray again with a hand on the ball will knock it away. O'Rourke deciding what to do. We'll get up to Sanborn. Up, draws a foul. No, block. Going the other way to Kaludi. Got it. And Fairhaven calling a timeout after the made basket. They're down by 16, 36-20 with 2.53 to go from the MSJ gym on Hunger Vision. It's one of the rare times for Haven was able to get out and get the numbers on a break. They converted it into a basket, then called a timeout. A little different look defensively this time by Fairhaven when they come out of the huddle. And it caused a turnover. Yeah, nice job up top. Travel called, and Fairhaven will take it side out. I'm waiting to see Breslin will come over, and it'll be Breslin taking the basketball out of bounds for the Slaters. Step back and he'll match up against Cassell now. Cassell with good balance coming down the floor defensively. Ellis, O'Rourke all over him. We'll give it off to Standard. Trying to take Melendez inside. And Melendez tipped the pass. It was a pass intended for the baseline. Knocked away. There's Cassell. Got it. Oh, that's a pretty move by Cassell. Pushes the lead to 18. Haven having a problem like just putting together back-to-back -to -back baskets. Kaludi for his second three of the third quarter. 38-23. Yeah, Breslin knows it, raises his hand like the old-fashioned days when you were called for a foul. You'd raise your hand. I wish they still had to do that. 
on a regular basis. The BMSJ ball side out. That's the third team foul of this half on Fairhaven. And Ackley is going to be allowed to come in. And he will come in at the 2.04 left of play mark in the third quarter. Sanborn will sit down for MSJ. As Cassell and Kaluti. And then the steal by Breslin and the finish. But just a great move by Kaluti set up the easy pickings by Breslin and then they basket at the other end. A block out of there. Standard got up the air mile and made the block. 38-25 is this the spark that Verhaven has been looking for. Bruno passed up the open three and then Murray came out to play him defensively. Standard being guarded by Melendez. Ellis, Kaluti, is he hot? He's hot! Kaluti got the lead down to 10. He's got three threes all in the third. And almost another steal as Breslin came up from behind. It's going to be a turnover as the defensive pressure ratcheted up by Fairhaven has rattled MSJ. And we've got a ball game at the old MSJ gym on Munger Vision. 38-28, the Mounties with the lead. Fairhaven this trip with a chance to bring the lead down below double digits. Coralou, Murray, Mitchell back in there with three fouls. Ackley and Melendez. I missed this somebody. O'Rourke. Yeah. Coralou slaps the ball out of bounds. Breslin apparently got out of the way of it, so he wouldn't be touched out of bounds with the ball. They were looking for the long release on that play. And Kaluti, like I said, they, in the very start of the ball game, I said they really needed him to be here offensively tonight, and he's come to life here in the third quarter. Trying to back in Mitchell will go in, and I tell you, very fortunate not to pick up a foul there was Melendez. I like the matchup. They went to Kaluti against Mitchell. He has the reach advantage on him, but... One thing about a run like this, you don't want to lose like a timeout. You don't lose that edge and intensity because with one trip down and a foul, you could give all back all that momentum and ground you gain. Standard. I guess what I'm saying is every possession in the comeback is so critical to momentum. Flutie took the bump, no whistle. Wow. Melendez this time will hand the ball off to Mitchell. Corlew. Oh, they had the open lane at first. Melendez, nice job of going out to get the ball. Then the pass down below and the foul. What a job by Melendez. To hang in the air, survey the floor, and then make the pass to Ackley, who drew the foul. Nice job by Melendez of MSJ. Ackley trying to compose himself here. Get focused on the basket. Gets set for the free throw for 31. Eight seconds to go in the third quarter. Boy, he got the home court bounce there. Woo! Yeah. 39-28 MSJ. And it stays 39-28. to Boy, that ball took forever to become a rebound in Kaluti now with a Rourke on him. Again, that's a matchup that Kaluti can shoot over his defender. The Bounties, at one point, had an 18-point lead here in the third quarter. Fairhaven going to take it down for the final shot of the third quarter. 13 seconds, 12 seconds, and he'll swing it around now. Keep track of where Kaluti is. Up, off, bounce, standard, no good. Rebound will be knocked out of Ackley's hands. His long pass could become a bucket. One second, and nope. Melendez almost with a chance for a late bucket, but it's going to stay 39-28 MSJ with the lead on Munger Vision heading into the fourth quarter play. Bounties with three timeouts left, and I'm not sure. I think that Fair Haven with three timeouts left also. Clooney to standard. Clooney with that ability. But they match him up on the edge of that zone to shoot over the top of the defender. And like I said, he's got three threes all here in this. Well, I don't know if they're all here. He's got three threes in the ballgame. Standard rimmed out on Ackley with a great box out. And then the strong rebound. Mitchell playing with the three fouls. Glances to the sideline. We'll get the play call. He'll be picked up by Bruno. Just at the logo at midcourt. 
after Rourke will roll to the floor. Breslin will be called for the foul. And that's going to be the fifth team foul. And they're going to have, yeah, Breslin with four fouls now will sit down. And that'll bring Emery into the ball game. Bruno will guard the inbounds pass, number 15 is blue, and that's Mitchell. Now we'll get it into Melendez. Oh, great job on the baseline. Great job by Melendez. Standard, for some reason, overcommitted to the out inside of the court. That left the baseline open, and Melendez slid along it and made the basket. Lead back to 13 now at 41, 28. Emery to Ellis. They go inside to Standard. Up and no. Tell you, it was an off-balance shot by Bruno, and again, you can lose all that momentum on these little mini runs that MHA looking to put together. Clock at seven minutes to go in the ballgame. Standard with the steal. Looking for the numbers, wants to give it up. Yeah. They're able to go to the half-court set. Now, Cludy was doubled on the dribble and didn't get a chance to take the three, but a three ball from the corner by Bruno. We'll bring it back to a 10-point ball game. It's going to be Emery called for the foul away from the ball, and that will be the 16th foul. Corlew coming out for MSJ, and Cassell coming back in the ball game, number 23 in white. O'Rourke hustling to the inline. He'll take the ball to bounce. Emery will defend the pass, number 10. Mitchell. Working with Bruno and now almost could have been an offensive foul. There's the shot, the follow-up, and Melendez with the bucket. Oh, those second chance points. It wasn't so much for Haven did a good job defensively is that they dodged the bullet on the first miss, but then gave up the second one. And that time the shot taken by Ellis was an air ball. To Cassell, he'll take it, stop, pull up, and no. Weak side rebound, tipped around, it'll be Ellis taking the ball away from O'Rourke. Levi Ellis, long pass to the corner to Kaludi. He'll split the defense, go up, and off the glass and in by Kaludi. He's in double digits now in scoring, and the lead back to a 43-33 MSJ lead. Tipped around, and it will be a turnover. MSJ at times had problem with this Fairhaven press or this version of their press. Five and a half minutes to go in the basketball game. Cludy calls for it, shoots it. No. Rebound, gonna have a foul. O'Rourke will be called for the foul. That'll be the sixth team foul on the mound. So both of them, MSJ and Fairhaven, with six fouls apiece. And pose a butt coming into the ball game for Bruno for Fairhaven. There was a change. I think it was Murray that came in for MSA. Boy, Standard got in a bad spot, but able to get out of it. Clouty reverses it, set on a rim, put back up. No good. It was Emery with the putback. That was blocked out of bounds. Going to stay with Fairhaven. Great action on Munger Vision. Rat time in that sequence. Now they've had everybody going to take the ball out of bounds, and now it'll be Standard. Are right, they going to allow the sub? Yeah. Sanborn coming in for Ackley for MSJ. High stack being ran by Fairhaven. Emery open. Emery, no. Good hands by Murray. Ball tipped right back to him. What a play by Murray just to keep his focus on the ball. Puts a shot up and in. Murray with the bucket. Lead at a dozen on a pretty play by Murray. Fair Haven playing toss and catch around the perimeter. Clooney, there's the baseline cut. Standard got it. Strong move by Standard. Nice finish, too, by the big man. Ten point ball game here in the fourth quarter. Remember, in the third quarter, the Bounties able to pump the lead up to 18 at one point. And we're going to have an MSJ timeout with 4.37 to go. You see the score. Bounties by 10 on Munger Vision. Two timeouts left now for MSJ. Mitchell playing with the three fouls, and I don't believe there's any other Mountie in foul trouble. We'll spread the floor a little bit now. Looked like they're going to run the wheel up top, but they didn't. And then Melendez 
Looked like he was making a move for the pass to the spot he had just occupied, and the ball went off his fingertips out of bounds. Open pass to the front court. It's the defense going to pick up. Well, they're going to get set in that. Uh, see if I can identify here what they're playing. Cloody fouled. Yeah, that should be the one on one as Cloody was fouled. That'll be the seventh team foul. Cassell will pick up the foul, and Joe McCurney right on the call with the one on one. I tell you, it's been a wonderfully officiated ball game. I'm looking to see, that's Cassell's first personal foul, wow. For as hard as he plays, that's his first foul with four minutes left in the ball game. Flutti cuts the lead to nine. Hadn't been below double digits in a long time. The lead, that is. Got them both. Flutti, like I said, came to life here in the second half offensively. Just started to assert himself and look more and more for a shot. Mitchell, got to the elbow and he's gonna work it back up top now. He wants Cassell to come over to the elbow this time. As he's isolated against Emery, they penetrate, kick the ball out. Murray glides, shoots, and no. That was a great offensive move, but didn't get it. Kaluni will reach out and grab the ball, and stoned back away by Mitchell, and got it. Mitchell with a great play for MSJ. Well, that was a big sequence right there. Remember that with 3.30 to go in the ball game. Could have been a four point swing right there. Ellis. Brian Emery, long range Emery. Three ball, second, three ball the second half for Emery. Lead down to seven, 47-40. Coach Prentables wants the defense to come further up the floor. On the finish by Sanborn, count it! Kaluti will collect the ball and Sanborn going to the line for MSJ. Joey Davin with the call. That was a great looking play by the Mounties and it's a timeout taken by Fairhaven. 49-40, Mounties with the lead, 3-12 to go on Munger Vision. So Sanborn now ready to try to complete the three point play and score the 15th point of the night for Emma Shane. He'll be off the mark. Kaluti, second personal foul on that play. He also just got the rebound off the missed free throw. That's a two point shot, and that's good. Clearly a two point shot, and a lead back down to seven again. See Emery in the backcourt. Mitchell just blows by him on the running one hander. Becomes a pass. Boy, I tell you what, Sanborn in the right spot. We'll grab the ball, put it up and in, lead back to nine. 2.40 to go in the basketball game. And Fairhaven has time to be patient offensively. I mean, there's two and a half minutes to go. I'm looking for Kaluti. Bump by Murray and block out of bounds by Melendez. Make no doubt about it. Oh yeah, he thumped that one. Be Kaluti. Handed the basketball from Jimmy Shortle and Breslin checked back in for Fairhaven. Yeah, and Murray called for the foul. And that will be the one on one. Still just the eighth team foul. Third foul on Murray. And boy, critical, critical free throws here for Bruno. O'Rourke at the scorer's table for MSJ. Bruno will miss it. Ball tipped all the way out to Ellis. Thought about the three ball and then will slide the pass over to Bruno. To Breslin. He's going to take the three ball. Got it! Ellis with the three ball. And it'll be Fairhaven basketball. No! Oh, there's a last touch by Fairhaven. It'll be MSJ basketball. Murray coming out for the Mounties. It'll be O'Rourke going in to take his spot. 51-45. Fairhaven coming back from an 18-point second half deficit. Down just six. They play Breslin on the inbounds pass, and Cassell now will turn to the open court. Ball tipped to Melendez. Got it. What a strong finish by Melendez. Glutti conceded the last foot there of the drive, not to pick up the foul. 
53-45. Breslin, no, uh, Bruno, no. Down to a minute 47. And it's almost time for Fairhaven if they don't get a defensive stop here to start shifting strategies as Sanborn got fouled from behind. Bruno, I believe, 15 will pick up the foul. And I'll send Sanborn to the line. And also stop the clock with a minute 37 to go. 53-45. Mache with the lead, and each team with 18 fouls. That's the third foul on Bruno. Big free throw by the big man, Sanborn. Shot is going to be short, and Standard with a good job of getting the ball first. Kaludi now. Yeah, it's all about possessions and points now. Fairhaven's got to come out with points off every possession, and they've almost lost the ball. And Bruno, three ball, and they got it. Well, I'll tell you, timeout called by Fairhaven. I'm not sure how many threes Fairhaven's got, but the majority of them come here, a lot of them come here in the second half as they started to find their range. It's a six point ball game with a minute 24 to go. MSJ with the lead. Earlier in the broadcast, how MSJ and two games that I did during the tip off tournament came out with very strong first halves, built up big leads, and then either struggled themselves in the second half or the teams they played made some great adjustments to come back in the second half. But this ball game, the same deal. I mean, MSJ with a strong first half had an 18 point lead in the third quarter, struggling to hold on now. It's for Haven. Has a minute 22 to go to complete the comeback. And they get the ball to Melendez. To O'Rourke, to Sanborn, got a beautiful press break. Great job on the press break by the Mounties. That's a big basket. Ellis traveled, big turnover. It's all about possessions. That time it became a travel call. 65 seconds to go, Mounties up by eight. It's still just the one and one if Fairhaven chooses to start to fall right here. So say if the Mounties get the ball in bounds, yeah. I think, you'd, yeah, you'd want to foul. Cludy will pick up the foul. Not the guy you want committing the fouls because you're going to need him in there. But, yeah, I, I like this strategy. I don't believe letting him run down the clock. I mean, it's eight points right now, the difference. That's the third foul on Cludy. As they are looking for a towel as there's some perspiration, moisture, wetness, condensation, something on the floor. Jimmy Short, of course a married man, he's very familiar with doing housework, so he gets the spill waved up. So it's Cassell at the free throw line, I forgot to mention that, it's Cassell will be up at Got it. Lead at nine with 63 seconds to go in the fourth quarter. Cell settles in for the second shot. He'll miss it. Boy, what a hard rebound. It came off to the side. Sanborn chased it down, and that's the foul by Breslin. And I believe he just fouled out. And by the look on his face, shot. That'll bring Emery back in. So Breslin with a good effort tonight, but he'll fall out with one minute even to go in the basketball game. And allow Austin Emery now to come in and take his spot. That'll put Cassell back at the line. Boy, just a bad break for the Slaters here in that second shot that he missed. The rebound kicked way out to the right side. It gave Sanborn a chance to chase it down. And this is also two shots because it was the 10th team foul. So you can sell now. Trying to salvage one here as he's missed two in a row, and he will miss that one. Kaludi almost got to start thinking about three balling it here. And you can still take points, one, two, or three points, but Ellis hangs and. Comes down to O'Rourke and fouled by Ellis. 
And that will send O'Rourke to the line to shoot a couple. It's, I mean, that's the 11th team foul, which I know you don't count like that. But. And it's still just a nine-point ball game because of the last missed free throws. Yeah, so that pushes lead back to 10, 58-48 MSJ. As freshman Patrick Horwart makes that first of two free throws. And he'll get them both. Miss Chase bench couldn't be more clear about no fouls, no fouls. Emery up on bounce, no good. And that's probably the ball game right there with that miss. So an 18 point deficit, got as low as six here in the fourth, but that's a lot to overcome. And Grahaven now with just 27 seconds left. Going to come to the MSJ Gymnasium and put up a good fight, but it'll be the Mounties with the win tonight on Munger Vision as They'll kick the ball out to O'Rourke, and yeah, they're gonna let the clock run down. Each coach has said no fouls. Cludy knocked the ball away. Cludy, after a monster second half, gonna take it all the way up and no, nope, hung on the rim and wouldn't drop. Two seconds, one second, and congratulations to MSJ. Good effort by Fairhaven. Get out there, support your student athletes. This was Munger Vision.